So uh, in the final chapter of uh, Daniel chapter 12, uh, uh, but uh, the ruler is a divine prince. What does uh, this transition mean in the opening chapter 12? What does it mean when Michael stand up? You know, uh, this is an interesting uh, uh, statement that uh, Daniel was writing here because uh, what does it mean when uh, Michael stand up? And uh, it has some uh, uh, theological implications. Standing up is, uh, you know, kind of protecting, protecting your, uh, your, uh, your people. Uh, when uh, Michael stands up, uh, he is notice uh, he is also uh, uh, trying to uh, protect as a military leader or a general, and at the same time, it also has a meaning that can alter, uh, stand, falls to the judgment sitting. Meaning to say that uh, he is our advocate. When the defense lawyer uh, stand up at the court, that means it is a very important aspects of uh, 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 the court hearings. Uh, here it is. Uh, why why is that important? Standing up because he is interested uh, that uh, we are protected by the accusation of the enemy. And that means to say that he is interested in the affairs uh, of his people. And at the same time, if you go back here, uh, he talks about found, who are found in the written book, which heavenly book is likely in view here. What is the meaning of this time of trouble? You know, I was uh, thinking about this and you know, when your name is written in the book of life, that is one of the key factors in which uh, God is so interested with his people. And also the time of trouble mentions here in this text uh, will be, it says there that such has not happened from the beginning of the nations until then. Uh, God's people wouldn't have it easy during this time. It's a difficult time. Uh, you know this uh, corona virus uh, epidemic or pandemic is kind of a preview. Uh, we need to remember that uh, I'm not saying that this is a fulfillment of Daniel chapter 12. No, it is only uh, an example of how difficult it is sometimes for God's people uh, to move around because the enemy is hunting them. Uh, persecuting them and the fury of, of Satan is uh, unleashed and uh, without God's uh, protection uh, we won't survive and most of some of us uh, you know my uh, could could uh, die because of it and but in the time of uh, everyone whose name is written found in the book will be delivered see this is one interesting uh, note that Daniel uh, wrote anybody who are persecuted even if uh, you know in this difficult times uh, and hopefully that uh, our name is written in the book how are we going to be included in that book uh, let's go back into the experience of Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego they stand uh, for the very principles that uh, they have learned that uh, in spite of what's going to happen, they cling, they trusted God, and, and uh, you know what happened? Uh, Jesus came in the support person, and uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw the very essence of God's protection. They were not harmed, they were not, uh, you know, anything. God, when God is with us, who is against us? And at the same time also, there is this, uh, Daniel chapter 2, verses to, uh, uh, 12 to 2 to 3. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. You know, this is uh, uh, an extremely blessed uh, verse. Uh, Daniel 
is talking about resurrection. And uh, when we talk about resurrection, uh, you know, it's rare in the Old Testament. Bodily resurrection is so rare in the Old Testament. Why? Uh, why the resurrection? Isaiah mentioned about it. Uh, uh, Jeremiah and uh, I think Hosea also alluded to the idea of resurrection. But here is a very clear statement or, or verse that says, uh, Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, and others to shame and everlasting content. And uh, what reasons do we not need fear? In Romans 8.18, uh, let me read Romans 8.18, it says there, <clears throat> I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. You know, uh, Paul, who undergone uh, a very difficult time in his life, uh, counted it as a glow, uh, you know, blessing. And in Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, it says also there that, uh, let me read it from him. Hebrews chapter 2, verses uh, 14 and 15. It says there, since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him. Who holds the power of death, that is the devil. And free those who are, who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. So there is a promise in which Jesus conquered death. That's why uh, there is, we do not need to fear death in this uh, case. Uh, then, uh, however, I'm, I'm asking a question. Uh, there is that mention of uh, resurrection to everlasting life, others shame and everlasting content. There seems to be a, 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 a because according to the Bible, there are two resurrections. One resurrection at the coming of Jesus Christ and one resurrection at the, you know, after the millennium, after the resurrection of the, the, uh, of the uh, uh, evil people to see the glory of God's new resurrection. But in this case here, it seems to me that the, the, the righteous and, one, and some of those, it says there, others, it says because it mentions there, Multitudes who sleep, like it's saying that uh, all. There seems to be a special connotation of a special resurrection because it is a resurrection of multitudes and at the same time a resurrection of some people to shame and everlasting content. What does that mean? And I was thinking about that. And uh, quarterly lessons, it says there that uh, it connotes to a scope of resurrection about special resurrection. In Daniel chapter 2, 12 verse 2, announces both the righteous and the wicked will rise from the dead at the same time. This resurrection takes place within the framework of the time, the end, as Michael stands up. To save his people. Therefore, this awakening must be a special resurrection because, as taught elsewhere in the scripture, the general resurrection of the righteous will take place in the second coming of Jesus, and that of the wicked will happen at the end of the millennium. However, scriptures give us indications of special resurrection of those who crucified Jesus Christ and uh, in Matthew chapter somewhere there in Matthew Jesus said that when he responded to the high priests and he said you are going to see me 
that connotes uh, that there is a special resurrection for those people who persecuted him and put him to death in the cross. Now, the sealed book, <clears throat> John chapter 12, 4, it says here that, uh, but you, Daniel, close up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. And uh, of course, uh, back then, uh, there are some people who think that this is about scientific advancement about travels from here and there. But <clears throat> you go back to the Old Testament concept, uh, the, uh, the here and there is referring to an eyeball. Eyeball that means to say that when they read the manuscripts, their eyes is rolling from right to left, down and there. That is about uh, the meaning of uh, indications of that one. In essence, really, is that uh, this concept is about uh, the book of Daniel. Because the book of Daniel is uh, uh, really uh, before the fulfillment of this prophecy. It's, it's mysterious. But uh, towards the end uh, uh, of uh, the close and uh, sealed book, uh, towards the end uh, when it was fulfilled, the book of Daniel became... Uh, very, very uh, encouraging to those people who study the word. So the question is, uh, I wish it could have ended there in, in verse 4. But uh, the question is, what are we going to do with uh, verses uh, 5, uh, you know, to 11? Why is it there? Uh, what does that mean? You, so, you know, the... Uh, in what ways that knowledge of fulfilled prophecy in the past have value in our lives today? So, you know, to the degree, you know, a great advantage uh, to be able to read the prophecies in Daniel after the fulfillment, you know. And uh, the question is, why, why in the book of Daniel uh, uh, such, uh, uh, such uh, verses uh, 5 to 11 is included in that? Now remember that uh, in my own understanding, uh, chapter 12 is a summary of all uh, chapters that we have studied before. And chapter uh, 12 verses 5 to 11 is the answer in which Daniel was uh, uh, asking the question, it says, uh, and then it says, it says they liberated from there. Then I, Daniel, look, and there before me stood two others, one on the this bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. One of them said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, How long will it be before this astonishing, astonishing things are fulfilled? Daniel was. Uh, was kind of listening and there was a question how long will it be for this astonishing things are fulfilled and in verse 7 the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river lifted his right hand and his left hand towards heaven and I heard him swear by the end who lives forever saying it will be for a time and a half uh, for a times times and a half time and when the power of the holy people uh, has been finally broken all these things will be completed and i heard but i do not understand so i ask my lord what will be the outcome of all this be so there is a time prophecies here and daniel was interested in knowing what would be the outcome of this uh, prophetic time. And so as we look at this prophecy timelines mentioned in Daniel chapter 12, 
we should bear in mind that this chapter is a conclusion, an epilogue to the whole book. Three specific time prophecies appear here in Daniel 12. The first one is predicted uh, that a time, times, and half a time must last until the power uh, of the holy people had been completely shattered. The prophecy when uh, the time during which the saints were in the hand of the entity symbolized by the little horn. According to Daniel 7, uh, this three and a half time period spans from uh, AD 538 to 1798, where uh, the papacy was ruling and the people of God was under severe persecution. And the Christian church was hiding underground. The church that uh, never realized that they are persecuting God's people. And uh, if you notice in here, the, the, there is uh, a question again that Daniel asked, and then in verse 9, he replied, Go your way, Daniel, because the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Talking about time of the end, meaning to say time of the end of the prophetic period. It's not about the time of the end uh, right now. It's been fulfilled already. So uh, many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will be understand, but those who are wise will understand. And then in verse 11, from the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up there will be 1,290 days. 1,290 days overlaps uh, the first Prophecy of uh, two and a half, three and a half uh, years. The second mention here is that this time prophecy should start with the removal of the daily and the setting up of the abomination of the desolation. These events are related to the work of the little horn, where uh, they removed the daily and uh, set up the abominations of desolations. The prophetic period must overlap with the three and a half times mentioned above. It must likely, uh, you know, extend until uh, the papacy was uh, uh, in late, uh, when, uh, the papacy ended in 1798. The major event that occurred around this date is that the conversion of uh, uh, the French king Clovis into Catholic faith. And uh, this major event uh, is comparable to the conversion of Constantinople. Uh, uh, an interesting, uh, it's interesting that both, uh, that both uh, beginning and the end of this prophetic period are marked by the actions of the French leader. And finally, the prophetic period of uh, 1,335 days in verse uh, 12, it says here, Blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of 1,335 days. Comes with the blessings of those living at the end of time. Uh, no starting or closing time given. In verse 12. What does that mean? But it appears that, uh, that this time period is a continuation of uh, the previous period of uh, 1,290 days. Thus, from the conversion of uh, the French king, 508 AD, and then uh, 1,335 
added to it is comes to about 1843 or 1844 when the first angel's message was being preached uh, and the 2300 evenings and mornings were coming to a close and if you notice uh, when we go back uh, to verse 4 but you Daniel close up and seal the words the words of the scroll until the time of the end many will go here and there to increase knowledge and when the pioneers of the church that God had created the movement uh, it went back and studied the book of Daniel uh, somewhere there in the 18 40s where the Millerites movement uh, began to study and go back into the word and it says here that blessed is the one who waits and then as for you in verse 13 as for you your, your, your way will end you will rest and then at the end of the days you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance if you notice, it's interesting. Chapter 12 begins with a special resurrection. Resurrection of those multitudes who slept in the dust of the earth will awake. And it ends with the promise of a resurrection to Daniel. I was amused by this idea of being able to uh, being able to uh, explanation of Daniel that God's people here we see two things God's people persecuted and God's people ultimately vindicated God is always interested in the affairs of his people and there are occasions in details that at the time of trouble the situation is bleak and depressing we are entangled between the conflict of two forces of good and evil and yet at the end God won his case God's people will be delivered you know chapter 12 is a very blessed chapter to me because I know that uh, some of you lost loved ones I lost uh, loved ones. Uh, my father uh, passed away a few months ago. Uh, my father-in-law passed away a few weeks ago. And reading Daniel chapter 12 is a comforting uh, chapter to me because there is a promise of resurrection. A promise to Daniel who is a faithful servant of God he said that for you your way till the end you will rest and if you notice god's uh, statement or comforting statement about death is that it is rest meaning to say that sleep and then at the end of days you will rise up again to receive your relative inheritance oh what a blessed uh, day that would be and i hope that uh, as you ponder upon uh, the study of the word of god especially in the prophetic uh, visions of daniel summarized in chapter 12 there is the precious precious feeling of me that uh, in the end Although sometimes we suffer in this earth, there is always the Prince of King, Prince of, of, of Life, Jesus Christ, who is going to stand up and protect his people. Stand up and pretty soon he is going to come. And I hope that uh, this study of ours uh, will uh, encourage you to uh, be faithful faithful until the end like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego as we studied in the book of Daniel uh, chapter 2 uh, hopefully that uh, uh, 
uh, we continue to be faithful with him because God says you will rest and then the end of the days you will rise to receive your rapid inheritance. Thank you everyone and it be that uh, uh, you go on uh, from here to think about who God is, that God's people will deliver, will be delivered at the end.